Alright, so this video, I wanted to go over the history of Wing Chun. Um, I'm on the Wikipedia right now, and I'm just going to literally just read through some of the stuff and just comment on it. You know, go on Wikipedia yourself, look at, look at what I'm talking about. Um, but I just want to prove a point, you know. You know, that, that these systems, you know, they're false. You know, we, we need to be ourselves, express ourselves, you know, and do our do our thing. You know, not not mimic dead systems that don't exist or that are highly corrupted. You know, so so it goes on here it says Wen Chun is a traditional southern Chinese Kung Fu martial art specializing in close range combat. It is one of the most famous styles in Wushu. It is known for being economical, direct, and efficient. So, alright, so specializing in close range combat. That's already a problem right there. As soon as you specialize in anything, you already give up, give the opportunity for other people to find what your weaknesses are and then exploit that and take advantage of that. So, um, I don't feel that any art should be specialized. You know, now when you engage in, 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 a, in a confrontation, especially in sparring, you're not going to start in close quarters. You're going to start from further away. So any style or any weapons that, that focus on long range is going to have an advantage. So you got somebody that's got a gun, he's going to beat the person with the sword you know, as long as he maintains that range. Somebody with a bow and arrow is going to be able to defeat somebody with a staff as long as he maintains that range. As you take away the weapons, you even see it in boxing. Somebody that has height and range advantage, you know, it's going to be really tough to beat him because he's going to be keeping you away with his jabs. So range makes a big difference. So I spar with a lot of people that claim Wing Chun and their biggest weakness is their lack of range and it, it says it right here they're specializing in close range and there shouldn't be a specialty you know that's one of the, the main issues with styles in general is they, they want to specialize in things and when you specialize in things like that it already puts you at a weakness that's why there's, there's weakness there's so many weaknesses in wrestling because that's all they do. There's so many weaknesses in boxing because that's all they do. There's even weaknesses in the cage fighting because there's they're revolved around the rules within that cage. So that's already a, 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 a negative part about what they're saying here. And now it says it's one of the most famous styles in Wushu. Famous styles in, in, in martial arts, in Chinese martial arts. Well, why is that? It's only because of Bruce Lee. That's it. Nobody, especially in America, nobody would even know about Wing Chun if it was not about if it was not for Bruce Lee. All right, so um, they say right here, the creator is Ing Mui of the Five Elders. So Wing Chun is not her name. the The creator, her name is Ing Mui. Parenthood, they say Fuji Fujian White Crane. And Shi Quan. And I don't ever see anybody claiming those systems, those styles, or trying to practice those, but yet that's considered the parenthood. And then they say descendant arts, Ji Kun Do. Like, really? Like, that to me is kind of, it's, it's a long shot. I mean, Bruce Lee was the, who mentioned that he practiced the Wing Chun system. And then now they're saying the descendant artist Ji Kun Do. As if, as if Wing Chun is the parent to Ji Kun Do. And that, that, you know, that, that to me is a complete false statement. You know, Bruce Lee innovated and he drew from a lot, of, you know, he, he created and then he drew from a lot of different inspirations that had nothing to do with Wing Chun. So he did a lot of the cha-cha dancing, 
you know, he got influenced by that. He's studying Muhammad Ali's. He's studying um, a lot of Western boxing. He's studying fencing. Um, you know, he learned some nunchucks from Danny Asano. Um, Chuck Norris taught him some some high kicking. I mean, he learned like from Muay Thai and Chole Fight. I mean, he learned from a lot of different things. And then right here, they're trying to say that the descendant art is Jeet Kune Do. I mean, that's that is wrong. Like, it's trying to make it seem like they're above Bruce Lee. You know, and that is false. You know, another thing is descending art. That's the only, out of all this history, 400 years of Wing Chun or whatnot, you're telling me that's the only descendant art? Only Bruce Lee? What, there's no other students? Like, there's no other styles that's ever been developed other than Jeet Kune Do after Wing Chun? That is just very false okay um i don't i don't agree to that um and another thing is if 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 they're going to try to say that Wen Chun is above the jeet kune do then what about the parenthood what about the the styles that the parenthood of the Wen Chun, fu john white crane and shi Quan, why don't people practice that you know um I just don't agree with this. You know, this is all things that are not even documented. The only thing that's documented is Jeet Kune Do, and I feel that that's where the people that that truly are inspired to learn the Chinese martial arts and learn from Bruce Lee go to the Jeet Kune Do, which is are his movies and his writings. Um, but this this Win Chun and this Fujian White Crane and the Shi Quan, there's no documentation. You know. There's no proof, no evidence of the mastery of these techniques by the creators themselves. You know, but Bruce Lee was the creator of Jeet Kune Do. You see him right before your eyes. You see the, the text. You can read it yourself. You learn from him directly. Um, they said the literal meaning of Wing Chun is spring chant. So that is like a, a woman's... Like a woman's expression, a very feminine expression. Alright, it goes through all these techniques, but all that stuff is irrelevant, really. I mean, if they're going to talk about techniques, these techniques that they're talking about is just confining more limitations, saying that this is what Wing Chun is, and it cannot go outside of this box. And already, that's already very limiting towards your growth all right and then now there's this part that says sash system although historically uncommon during the era of Yip Man and prior there has been a trend of many schools and lineages to adopting their own sash ranking system examples are as follows it's like okay so then now they start implementing these sash systems and then they're gonna still like, who, you know, it says it's uncommon. They're saying that this is not what they do. They don't have this. And all of a sudden, schools and lineages start doing this. And now they're trying to make this a part of the so-called art. I mean, that is um, it's degrading. It's, it's sad. You know, it's like, okay, so now you want to make, you know... Because the schools want to make money, now they're going to implement these ranking systems. And then they say like, you know, William Chung lineage, Sonny Tang lineage, Austin Gold lineage. Just like, don't even claim Win Chun. Just say William Chung Kung Fu and go ahead and put your sashes on. Sonny Tang Kung Fu, just put your sashes on. Austin Gold Gong Fu and put your sashes on, but don't try to bring in Win Chun and then say that hey, you know, now we're gonna change things up. We're gonna start putting these using sashes and all this other stuff, and we're still gonna be claiming Win Chun. I don't agree to that at all. Um, so now. 
says Winchun together with Hungar and Cho Leifa is named as one of the three great martial arts schools of the south which originated and became popular in southern China Wing Chun is practiced globally in over 64 countries it is the world's most popular form of southern Kung Fu Dan Yen played the role of Wing Chun Grandmaster Yip Man in the 2008 movie Yip Man, which was a box, box office success in its sequels IP Man 2 and IP Man 3. Okay, so this is where I have a problem with two notable practitioners Yip Man, Wing Chun Grandmaster. I mean, Supposedly, Wen Chun's been around for 400 years, so why is Yip Man, you know, the only person that they're going to mention? And why do we even know of Yip Man is because of Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee is, was great at what he did, not because of Wen Chun, it's because of him. Because he was able to, to learn from, the, from, the, from Americans, learn from the Chinese learn from the world and then create his own way and he became famous because of his own talents his own skills and yeah one of his teachers was Yip Man but another one of his teachers was Muhammad Ali Chuck Norris Danny Insano and a lot of the other martial arts that he interacted with he learned from the world he learned a lot from Lao Tzu he learned a lot from J. Krishnamurti you learn a lot through self-study. And he was great because he put the effort to become great. Yip Man didn't make him great. You know, um, Yip Man didn't give birth to him. Yip Man didn't, you know, bring him to America. I mean, he was the one who made the effort, you know, to, to go to try to become successful in Hollywood, to try to be an actor, to try to, you know, to get married and have two kids and to build a future for himself. The only reason people even know about Yip Man is because of Bruce Lee. You know, otherwise, if it wasn't for Bruce Lee, nobody even know who Yip Man is. Nobody would even care. And then they say Moy Yat, one of Yip Man's closest disciples, and the youngest seafood promoted by Yip Man at age 24. Okay, who, who, who's Moy Yat? You know, and then now, number three, they put Anderson Silva, one of the most successful MMA fighters of all time. Anderson Silva ain't representing Wing Chun. He ain't representing Kung Fu. You know, he's a black dude that's fighting in a cage. He's not Chinese. And if you're fighting in a cage, you're not representing Wing Chun. You're not representing Kung Fu. You're not representing any of that you're representing cage fighting so what is he doing even in this list number four Brandon Lee trained in Wing Chun as well as Jeet Kune Do Muay Thai and Shaolin Kung Fu really like Brandon Lee Bruce Lee's son is listed as number four even above Bruce Lee and trained in Wing Chun as well as Ji Kune Do I mean the creator of Ji Kune Do was his father so if anything he should only claim Ji Kune Do or his own Kung Fu and nothing else and Wing Chun the creator of Wing Chun died 400 years ago, so how could he train in Wing Chun? It's like Bruce Lee, when he was younger, you know, they're telling him, okay, you're learning Wing Chun. After that, he's like, you know what, this, this ain't cutting it, this ain't effective enough. I gotta create something better. So he creates his own thing, ends up calling it Jeet Kune Do. His way is more effective, better 
you know, for, for modern day, for efficiency. So if Bruce Lee was going to teach somebody, he's going to tell them that you're learning my way. You're learning Jeet Kune Do. He's not going to teach them the stuff that doesn't work. So, and then he says he's training Muay Thai and Shaolin Kung Fu. It, it, I don't understand this. I really don't. I really don't. It just makes it look worse. You know, it really just makes it look worse when you say Wen Chun Ji Kun To Muay Thai Shaolin Kung Fu. Also, you really you got so much time to be master all of, all of those, especially when he died so young, like around the age of twenty eight or something, not something around that age. It's like, it'll take you a lifetime to even try to master Jeet Kune Do. You don't got time for any of these other arts that, that are just irrelevant. And then you're going to throw in Muay Thai, which is not even the Chinese, in there out of nowhere. So what does Muay Thai have to contribute to what, to what Bruce Lee didn't already know? Muay Thai has more rules, or is bombarded by rules and limitations. Jeet Kune Do had no rules and no limitations, so why would he have to train in Muay Thai when he's already training in Jeet Kune Do that, that has no rules? Why would you train something that's surrounded by rules when you're training in Jeet it, it, it goes opposite. And Shaolin Kung Fu, what? Did he, did he study in the Shaolin Temple or something like that? I mean, this is just a bunch of nonsense, really. Um, then he says, number five, Bruce Lee learned from Sifu Yip Man and Wang Sheng Lung. Really? What about, like, all the other people he trained with? What about J. Christian Murdy? What about Lao Tzu? What about Chuck Norris? I mean, he actually had a fight scene with Chuck Norris on film. And Chuck Norris was known to be like a, a great martial artist already. So he's on film with Chuck Norris. You can see it. You can see the, the sparring, the, the, the fight choreography. But they didn't mention him. You don't see any film of Bruce Lee with Yip Man. You don't see any film with Bruce Lee with Wang Sheng Lung, but you see it with you see Bruce Lee with Kareem Abdul Jabbar too. I'm sure that Bruce Lee learned a lot from Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I'm sure he did because this dude is tall, he's big, he's an NBA basketball player. All right, so you see him in the film with Kareem Abdul Jabbar, we don't see him listed here. You see him in the film with Chuck Norris, we don't see him listed here. Danny Sano was a was really good martial artist at his time as well. You see Bruce Lee in film with Danny Insano. And Danny Insano even mentioned that he was the one who introduced the nunchucks to Bruce Lee. You don't see Danny Insano on this list. Bruce Lee mentioned in his books that he would watch Muhammad Ali's fights all the time and learn from him and try to mirror Muhammad Ali and you even see the similarities between Muhammad Ali's boxing style and Bruce Lee's movements but we don't see Muhammad Ali's name on here like these people are trying to take credit for Bruce's hard work and successes not that it's Yip Man's fault because Yip Man was already passed away he didn't he don't know what's going on. Same thing with this other guy. They don't know what's going on. But people are trying to make these make it seem as if these individuals are responsible for Bruce Lee's amazing talent and skill. They are not responsible. I mean, if rather than learning from Yip Man and Wang Shun Lung where there's nothing there's not even any any videos out there with them, of them teaching or anything, or them or them even practicing martial arts. You're better off learning from okay, Bruce Lee. Learn from Chuck Norris, 
Danny Asano, Muhammad Ali. Then you could go and look at all of Muhammad Ali's boxing matches. Then you could go look at all of Chuck Norris's movies and everything that you could find online about him. You could go look at anything that Danny Asano has out there. Rather than, oh, Sifu Yip Man. Okay, there's nothing out there on him. No movies, no videos, no books, nothing. Read Bruce Lee's books yourself. He says he learns from J. Christian Murray. Okay, there's videos out there on J. Christian Murray. There's books out there, a bunch of books with J. Christian Murray. You know, all right, then next down the list, Donnie Yen, learn from Yi, Sifu Ip Chun. Not really, I don't know that much about Donnie Yen, but I do know this much. His mom knew martial arts, so she taught him when he was born. So now all of a sudden, oh, that's not relevant. Another thing is, Danny Yen even said he didn't even practice Wing Chun before making the movies. He didn't know nothing about that system. So, all of a sudden, you don't even mention the true history of where he learned from. But all of a sudden, you just say, oh, he learned from Sifu Ip Chun. And then next down the list, Philip Ng. Okay, so, Philip Ng learned from Sifu Wang Shun Lung. So, Philip was the son of the Sifu that I learned from. I learned the Chole Fut system from his Sifu or from from Sam Ng. His son was Philip Ng. So I trained with Philip Ng too. And then he's the one that's next down the list. Then it goes down to Ling Ting learned IP man's latest techniques before his death as a closed door student. Okay, how's that gonna be verified? Anybody could say that, right? Ip Chun, eldest son of Ip Man, and an inheritor of the legacy of the Win Chun style Kung Fu. So he's the eldest son of Ip Man. All right, so that's cool, but they sh I don't they shouldn't call it Wing Chun. It should have just been Yip Man's Gong Fu, and Ip Chun is his eldest son, and he is teaching Ip Man or Ip Chun Gong Fu or Yip Man Gong Fu. Wing Chun has to get erased from there, the way that I see it. Next person is Stevan Samiskiko, current Minister of Defense of Hungary. I don't know what's that all about. Jackie Chan, learn from Sifu Lung Ting. I don't know. Then it says Jeff Thompson, Michelle Yo, Nicholas Say, learn from Philip Ng, Ray, Ray Sifo, Eric Oram. Robert Downey Jr., Hollywood actors, Sam Hong, Steven Seagal, train with Randy Williams, T. Long, Jun Bao, Nicolas Cage, Song Nung, Wang Shenlong. All that stuff is a bunch of nonsense to me. It really is. Alright, so now we go to the history of Wen Chun. See what it says there. The history of Wen Chun has been passed from teacher to student verbally rather than through documentation, making it difficult to conform to confirm or clarify the deferring accounts of Wen Chun's creation. Some have sought to apply the methods of higher criticism to the oral histories of Wen Chun and other Chinese martial arts. Others have attempted to discern the origins of Wen Chun 
by determining the specific purpose of its techniques. Win Chun started to appear in independent third-party documentation during the era of the Win Chun master Liang Zhan, making the subsequent history of Win Chun and its divergence into branches more amenable to documentary, ver documentary verification. Oral histories. Yip Man Win Chun, the oral history of the Yip Man branch of Yip Win Chun, corresponding with modern research, is as follows. After escaping the destruction of the Fujian Shaolin Monastery by King forces circa 1730, the Abbess Ing Mui fled to the distant Daoling Mountains in, on the border between Yunnan and Sichuan. There, Ing Mui often brought her bean curd at the tofu shop of Yim Yi. Yim Yi had a daughter named Yim Wing Chun whom a local warlord was trying to force into marriage. Ying Mui taught Yin Wing Chun a summarized version of her Southern Shaolin Kung Fu, which allowed Yin Wing Chun to fend off the warlord once and for all. After completing her training under Ying Mui, circa 1970, Yin Wing Chun eventually married Long Bak Chao to whom she taught the follow the fighting techniques that Ying Mui had passed on to her. After Ying Wing Chun died circa 1840, her husband Long Bak Chao passed the new style on to Long Wan Kwai circa 1840. Long Lan Kwai taught six members of the Red Boat Opera Group circa 1850. All Wing Chun today descendants descends from one of these six opera group members. Okay, so I mean that 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 just says it all right there. In a roundabout way it's just basically saying that this is all trash. Point blank. The history of Wen Chun has been passed from teacher to student verbally rather than through documentation. Alright, so why no documentation? Okay, I can understand back then. But today, why no documentation? You know how important documentation is? I mean, look at the Olympics. Like, what if 400 years ago, they're claiming that somebody was faster than Usain Bolt. Really? Prove it. They can't. Documentation is extremely important in everything that we do. Especially in modern times. I can understand back then, they didn't have this type of technology. They don't have videos. They don't have YouTube. They don't have the internet. Okay, so, it's understandable back then why they'll do what they're doing but today why are we passing on this wind chun when there's all these other things to learn from that have been documented like for example Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do documented documented his birth his, the name he was born with the name that was given to him the time that he was born where he was born, where he was raised, who his first martial art teacher was, what he was doing before he practiced martial arts. The movies that he's acted in, the books that he has written, who he has married, who his children are, how he looks like. What, he, could, what he, he was able to actually do, how he worked out, who his friends were, who, who was his family, who was his brothers. I mean, everything is documented. Interviews with them. And how do we know about Wen Chun? It was because of him. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even know about Yip, Wen Chun. We didn't even know about Yip Man. So we have all this documentation of Bruce Lee. So let's learn from Bruce Lee. 
all the stuff that was undocumented in the past, get rid of it. We don't need it. It doesn't work anyway. Even Bruce Lee said himself, stuff, this doesn't work. It's inefficient. It's too limited. It needs to be improved. Even Bruce Lee was saying that himself. So we shouldn't be focusing on Win Chun at all. It's, we should just let it die. Focus on Bruce Lee. Focus on the living Chinese martial art masters can, that can truly fight themselves, defend themselves, that can truly spar, that are actually fit, that, that you can actually see what they could do. Even right now, you go on the YouTube, you can see the people that are claiming Shaolin martial arts, you can see what they could do. But all this Wing Chun stuff passed on by verbally rather than through documentation. Okay, so if it's passed on verbally, then how are we supposed to determine what is true and what is false? We can have a million people out there claiming that they were verbally passed on this knowledge to pass on to you. It's like Every single little millisecond is documented in the Olympics. Don't think that just because somebody claims that they did something 400 years ago, all of a sudden they're going to be the best, they're going to be considered the, the greatest of, the, of all time just because they made that claim. There needs to be evidence. There needs to be documentation. There needs to be proof. And we have all the technology in the world to do that as of right now. So why all the stuff in the past that has been undocumented? Why are we even wasting our time there? So, so it says that this has been created by Ing Moi. So Ing Moi, this is supposed to be like, essentially, Ing Moi's Gong Fu. She teaches somebody called Yim Wing Chun. So her master, Yim Wing Chun's master is Ing Moi. So why is the art named after Wing Chun and not Ing Moi? Ing Moi is the one who taught Wing Chun. So why is Wing Chun's name so popular and not Ing Moi's name? The only way that I found out about Ing Moi was going through Wikipedia. But Everybody's talking about Wing Chun, making movies about Wing Chun, making movies about all this stuff, but nobody's mentioning Ing Moi when Ing Moi is actually the one who is the Wing Chun creator. Not just the teacher, she was the creator. But but her name has just been lost. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so Ing Moi taught Yim Wing Chun a summarized version of Sha Southern Shaolin Kung Fu. Summarized version of the Southern Shaolin Kung Fu. Why does it have to be summarized? Was it a quick fix? You don't got enough time to, to really get good, get strong, to practice. You don't got time to practice, so just give you a summarized version. Because you don't have enough discipline, you don't have enough gung fu to do the, the real. So you're just going to do the summarized version. So that already says it right there. How garbage this is. This person's not qualified enough to learn the real. Because they don't got enough time, they're not fit enough. Or whatever the case may be. So we're just going to give them the summarized version. The garbage version. The corrupted version. The watered-down version. Summarize is another way of saying 
watered down garbage. Quick fix. Quick fix version. That doesn't work. That's why Bruce Lee said it didn't work himself. Because it's a summarized version. Alright, so. Taught Yim Win Chan a summarized version of Shaolin Shaolin Kung Fu, which allowed Yim Win Chan to fend off the warlord once and for all. Okay. Sounds like a fairy tale to me. Sounds like Snow White or something like that. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, this is what it sounds like. After completing her training under Ying Mui, Yin Wen Chun eventually married Long Bak Chao, to whom she taught the fighting techniques that Ying Mui had passed on to her. So Ying Mui passes on a garbage, summarized, watered down, polluted, version of the real Kung Fu passes it on to this Wing Chun person whom what only sparred and fought against one person in her whole life and then she teaches her husband how to fight who do you know that's a martial arts master that gets taught from his wife That's like Michael Jordan learning how to play basketball from his wife. It's like obviously her husband doesn't know what he's doesn't know anything. He he knows absolutely nothing that he has to learn how to defend himself from his wife. Isn't that the man's job to defend the woman? Why is the woman teaching him? how to defend himself when he's the man. So even look at the lions, like the king of, of the pride is the lion, not the lioness. The lioness might do the hunting, but he is still the king. He is the defender. He's the protector of the entire pride. She cannot compete with the male lion. She didn't have that type of power. So, what is a wife doing teaching the husband? How great, first, is a summarized, polluted, corrupted, watered down version of the real Kung Fu passed on to this novice, weak, unskilled person and then now she's gonna pass it down to her novice unskilled weak husband to pass on for the next generations um, that doesn't that doesn't sit well first you shouldn't be passing on something that's w polluted watered down and corrupted to begin with it's supposed to go higher up not further down. Here you got Ing Mui who's practicing the real stuff. She's watering it down for Wing Chun. And then now Wing Chun barely knows what she's doing. And then now she's passing on to her weak husband who's, who's weaker than she is. Less skilled than she is. So... The way it's supposed to go is Ing Mui is supposed to, to make the art grow, not let it tumble down into what it is today. Okay, so to whom she taught the fighting techniques that Ing Mui had passed on to her after Yin Wing Chun died. Her husband, Long Bak Chao, passed the new style on to Long Lan Kwai, 1840. 
Vong Lan Kui taught six members of the Red Boat Opera Group. Circa 1850. All Wen Chun today descends from one of these six opera group members. So, the creator of Wen Chun was a woman. She passes that down to another woman in a summarized, corrupted, watered down, polluted version to another woman. The woman teaches her husband, who's, a, who's untalented, unskilled, and weak himself, doesn't know any martial arts himself, and then his wife, Wen Chun, dies, and then he keeps the name of Wen Chun, passes it down to his buddy, and then his buddy passes it down to six people in an opera group. And then that is the history of Wen Chun. And they're trying to say that that is the parent of Ji Kune Do. I'm sorry. That entire history has to be destroyed, getting rid of. Because all that is irrelevant. Everybody that was listening there, from Ing Moi to Win Chun to her husband to the friend to the whole opera group, none of these people are on camera. None of these people, you could see what they could do. And I'm not going to believe the fairy tale that a, a woman that created this system is going to be above Bruce Lee or Muhammad Ali or Floyd Mayweather Jr. or every single boxer that has ever stepped into the ring that's on camera. Or even myself. I'm not going to believe that these people are better in the martial arts than myself. I'm sorry. But I don't believe it. So I'm not going to pass down this garbage. Because I don't train in garbage. I train in the real stuff that works. And it's not Wing Chun. It's my Kung Fu. This is what works. And if people question what I do, they can come spar with me and see for themselves. But I do my own Kung Fu. I don't do Wing Chun. And as far as Jeet Kune Do is concerned, at least there's documentation. At least there's proof that it existed. And at least there's proof of the founder and the creator and what he was able to do. But here there's no proof at all. None. But yet there's all these people out there trying to teach something that doesn't even exist today. And that is all garbage. That's what I think about Wing Chun. It is garbage.